to Don Bosco Chintanaloka, Institute of Philosophy and Humanities. Don Bosco Chintanaloka is a Catholic higher education center governed by the Salesians of Don Bosco. We provide to the young a philosophical and cultural research and a faith ambient in order to grow in their religious life, in their youth and cultural activities. This evening, we have a very important guest in our studio, a veteran Salesian, a professor of philosophy, a missionary who had traveled all over the world of Salesians teaching and dialoguing with cultures and interacting the world of young in philosophy and ecclesiastical studies. We bring to you very reverend father, Professor Julian Jacobs from Belgium. Good evening, Father. Good evening, Father. Father Jacobs, tell us about your family, your parents, your education, and the first years of the Salesian life. Father, I will be very short with you. My parents, we call them our darlings. My parents were very dear and very near to us. But we lost our parents very at a very early age, and so we were orphans. I never forgive God that he took my parents, especially my mother, away from us. So we went to secondary school and we were confronted with uh, secular priests. But these priests were very strong and they were uh, a little bit uh, too strong for me. So our feelings as uh, youth and as boys, they were not very well uh, accepted and recognized by these priests. So I felt very, very dis uh, isolated and uh, I didn't feel at home at all with these priests. Yeah. So finally, there came a Silesian who was wandering throughout uh, the province in my place and he came across with uh, the case of my uh, father with four children. My mother died and my father with four children. So this uh, Salesian said, told my father, your boy has to come to the Bosco. So we went to the Bosco. The first time I came to the Bosco, it was for me from hell to heaven. Wow. So it means in Don Bosco, until the very second now, I feel at home. Not because the youth uh, or the politics or the economics or the relationship they changed. No, the whole thing changed to the, towards, uh, through the attitudes of these priests, civilian priests. And the first thing we felt in this uh, environment of the most was you are at home. Father Julian, tell us about your university career. That was the education and the manner in which many a student uh, developed. So we went to the university and between brackets, I am very, very grateful and very uh, pleased that my superiors asked me to study. So first we went to study philosophy at university and then we studied theology at university. And after this, the provincial at that time asked me to continue my studies. And I'm, to the very day, I'm very, very pleased that these uh, superiors give me trust, give me hope and money to finalize my study. So in summary, after my studies, we went for a kind of practical training. Uh, in university years, we uh, gave some teaching and we helped some assistant and we were uh, assistant and then uh, replacing the professor and so on and so on. But my main teaching was in the Silesian schools. In between, every Wednesday of the week, I came back to the rain to teach. So I kept this for uh, almost uh, uh, 16, 17 years, and I was very pleased to do this. Father Julian, Aristotle's uh, students, uh, 
They started and developed what commonly known as peripatetic school. They inquired philosophy, science, and they discussed matters of real life. They were not idealists or they were not thinking all the time about the theoretical aspects of life. You are a person who is so much inspired to this cancer of traveling, seeing, walking along with the young and dialoguing with all the cultures in the world. To my knowledge, you are already reaching up to a dozen of uh, uh, Silesian universities and post novitiate institutes where philosophy is major. Please tell us something brief about every institute and your beautiful experience in all over the world. So let's start with the beginning, Father. I always told my provincial, if I reach by the grace of God to 60, then I will go out of education. So uh, I reached 58, and suddenly there came a letter from the rector major that he was looking for uh, teachers for uh, Jerusalem. Yeah. So my rector told me, you have to go. I said, no, I not interested. I was not prepared for this. Finally, I went and I went from A to B and C and D and uh, it, it will make a list of, of uh, practically 15, 20 uh, institutes, power institutes, Silesian institutes. So what I did there was uh, helping. What I did there was being myself what I did there was uh, looking if I was accepted by the brothers and to conclude the whole thing and that goes very to the bottom of my heart I think there is something like Silesian hoods there is something I don't know if other congregations have the same uh, feeling but I feel you are a Silesian forever and ever but wherever and wherever so forever wherever if you go to uh, india if you go to kerala if you go to sri lanka if you go to africa if you go to haiti everywhere you are at home so what i did was uh, supporting this kind of uh, mentality by teaching Western European philosophy, and uh, the main thing I will always remember when I put my foot on the threshold of an institute, I felt you are one of us. Yes, that makes me proud. Father Julian, according to the information we received from Father Ivo Kohel, the General Counselor for Formation. We in the Salesian congregation treasure a huge wealth, that is, in Asia, 11 post novitiate centers, in America, 7 post novitiate centers, in Europe, 3, in Africa, 8. This is really big. Now, you are being given a big venture, a big project to talk to all these centers. Can you please brief us? the history, the genesis of this massive initiative and activity and what is the way forward? As we all know, Father, the <clears throat> formation in the Silesian history, in the Silesian congregation itself is a very, very big issue. Yes. The general chapter, the last general chapter, I think that is my personal feeling, I think the whole chapter was about formation. Yes. All the documents uh, we have in the last two, three years are all about formation. Yes. The big gatherings in Nairobi, in Bangkok, uh, formation. So the whole congregation is busy uh, and actively busy and preoccupied and questioning and proposing uh, to think about formation. Yes. So Father Ivo with his team, Father Silvio and Brother Raymond, they 
do according to a very big good job. But the main issue in formation is, uh, and now I'm a little bit uh, going to the extremes, which is uh, exaggerated. The main thing in the formation is uh, the formators themselves. So we, as you said, we have a treasure with young people, of young people. We have a treasure of young, good formators, but we can do better. So we are, we, I am uh, the uh, Majestat is Pluralis, I mean, that is not me. We are thinking to go around and show our face with the three big attitudes in the Moscow's uh, philosophy, in the Moscow's pedagogical attitude. Reason, loving kindness, and the religion. And the main thing of this uh, going around in the future within uh, a year is that we are going to tell our confreres we have to dig a little bit deeper. A little bit more uh, handy and a bit more elaborated about these three attitudes. We call them a prevent preventive system. But we are not systematic people, we are not people who think system, we are not system theorizing, we are practical people. And we are saying what we do in formation is good, comma, it could be better. Yes. That's all. Father Julian, the whole project is entitled Teaching and Learning Philosophy in the Salesian Way. The primary target group remains Salesian teachers of philosophy, non Salesian teachers of philosophy, rectors of the post novitiate, and the secondary target group, not less important, that is our students. Today, during COVID 19, and with the second and third wave, there is a lot to talk, discuss, and to reflect about teaching and learning. Please illumine us your thinking. So, Father, teaching and learning, it goes about the two essential pillars. Teaching, that is the teacher. Learning, that is the student. But we have to do it together. So if we want to uh, form, inform, and if we want to improve a student, we have to improve the student. And if we want to improve the student, we have to improve the teacher. And if we improve the teacher, then the teaching and the learning will improve. For example, if we are as teachers, explaining Aristotle. We can do this at length. We can do this in depth. We can do this with all kinds of legacies, even now, Aristotle now, and so on and so on. But that is, according to me, not the essence of philosophy. You teach Plato, you teach Aristotle, you teach Heraclitus, you teach Democritus, you teach Descartes, you teach St. Thomas, you teach Kant, you teach Husserl, you teach Levinas. In short, give the students all the most essential things to work with and to think about. If you are talking about, for example, Sartre, and you are saying as a teacher, Sartre, that is the man who was an atheist, who was a communist, who did not believe in God, who was always saying uh, life is absurd and life is nihilistic. And so his main title of uh, the title of his main book is uh, Lettre et le Nion. So nihilism. He is a nihilist. And we are saying Sartre is uh, not a good example to teach for our youngsters. But that is a wrong idea of Sartre. That is not the meaning of nihilism. That is not the meaning of etre. So Sartre gives us 
in, in, in Shkot gives us a kind of mentality from this age in which we, with our youngsters, have to think about teachers and students. And it goes for the Bhagavad it goes for Eastern philosophy, it goes for Western philosophy, if there is a kind of Western philosophy, it goes about African philosophy. But we have to go back to the essence, to the basics of the basics. Yes. Father Julia, you have a huge teaching and research experience. Please, how do you qualify the second part of the project, that is, teaching and learning philosophy in the Salesian way. Let us come to the Salesian way. When we talk about the Salesian way, we can't today forget after COVID-19 and the third wave, now we are having the technology. Our philosophy, our religious communities, our classrooms are no more that sort of so traditional blackboard and the whiteboard and the teacher student ambient today we are orbiting in a digital classroom we don't have one teacher we have several teachers coming online we don't have one student or a single group of students in one country but we are simultaneously connected to the whole world of philosophy and culture in our research and in our learning, in our teaching. What are the challenges and how to go about? So, Father, your question is to the point and it uh, touches me to the point. To start with your last idea. Um, after COVID-19, will there be a change? I think so. And there will be a huge change. I think so. I feel it. But let us never forget that we are Salesians and we have something, according to me, unique in, in, in philosophy thinking, in philosophy teaching, in uh, pedagogical uh, circumstances, which I think as a principle nobody has. Nobody has is a little bit uh, exaggerated, but we as Salesians, we have uh, we have it in our fingers. You must be there, assistance. You are not uh, to, to 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 play football. Yes, you are not to play with the computer. Yes, you are not playing cards. Yes, but we are pedagogical people who try to communicate with youngsters principles, not only a method, but principles, religion, reason, and loving kindness. These are fundamental human philosophical principles and nobody can uh, take this away from us because this is our spirit. This is our spirit we get from the most give me souls and the rest you can have it. Now, to your second or first thought, uh, will there be a change after COVID-19? Uh, Father, uh, I hope so. Because all our discussions are now centered around technology. Do you like it or you don't like it? That is not at stake. We have to be there. As it is mentioned in our Constitution 38, where the youngsters came with their freedom, there we have to be. That is the place to be. And these youngsters, these youngsters, they have a personal TV, they have a personal phone, they have a personal iPhone, they have a personal, they have a personal, they have a personal. All these uh, technology, they know it better than I. If I have a problem with my iPhone, I am running to my comfort, which is forbidden to have an uh, iPhone. Yes. That is, that is, so we have to change. That is not a question, but we must, we have to change because if we do not do this, 
Let us close all our institutes and tell us we are finished. Because the youngsters, they do not run to us when we are saying no iPhones, no phones, no, no, no. That is not the way to... to, to. It reminds me about the, the, the first discussions a long time ago. Is the Sanesian... Uh, uh, does he have a right to have a personal bike, a personal motor, a personal uh, auto? These are laughable discussions now. And it is laughable in the eyes of these youngsters when you tell them no iPhones. That is out of the question. That is not really a kind of assistance. We have to be there. And that was the, the main thing of the letter of Bosco in 1884. He was disappointed what he saw. What did he, saw, what did he see? He didn't see the Sanesians. They were not there. And that was his big appointment. Let us hope and pray that it will never happen after COVID-19, that we as Sanesians are in, in, practically in the front row to, to provide these technology, of course. The big question is, no. yes. Father Julian, we are coming to the end of this beautiful dialogue and discussion with the 28 general chapter reflections and the 10 seeds that the Dicastero for Formation is proposing to us with Rector Major. Young Salesians for the young people. And we are always asked to renew ourselves, reflecting about the new strenna, which is uh, yet to come, and making everything new. Please give us a beautiful message, first one to the formators, to the Salesian teachers, and the second message to all the young people of the world, students, young Salesians learning philosophy, learning post-novitiate uh, formation, what are your final thoughts for that? So now you want to give me uh, the podium to get you to a message. Yeah. First of all, I want to start with our formators. In truth, in gratitude, we can only tell one another thank you for all the formators who did their utmost to teach, to accompany the youngsters, to go about, to be a father. That is what we get got from the most. I think if we develop this concept of being a father, being a father for our youngsters, we would gain a lot, a lot of credits from the youngsters, from our congregation, from surrounding people, from other congregations, from the church, because <clears throat> we as teachers, we have a kind of inbuilt attitude to look upon the treasure of our youngsters as children. We are telling one another uh, consciously and unconsciously they have to learn a lot. And the main thing in uh, a teacher, a civilian teacher, is thinking the main thing is. You have to listen to me. So they are trying to communicate that obedience is the main vow. They say it openly, but it is wrong. A religious life has three vows. Not only obedience. And blind obedience is at all costs devastating. So if we could, as teachers, develop and if we develop the notion of father, we would never treat our children 
our treasures in front of my eyes as children. These people in front of me, they are 20, 21, 22, 25, 26. They could be married, they could have children. Many of these young people, they don't have even a rupee in their pockets. They have to ask obedience from dawn to dusk. They are not taught to take their own responsibility. Of course we have to talk with one another, of course we have to dialogue, but we have to get rid of these are children. And my second message is for the students, never fall in the trap to react as children. Because you are giving yourself away. Fight for your, in, in, in the good sense, fight for your responsibility. Fight for your adulthood. Fight for your trial and effort. effort. To fight for your looking for the truth, which means that you have a right to make mistakes. And that is the beauty of our congregation. If we could, teachers and students, if we could consider, uh, look upon each other, perceive one another as equals, of course, as symmetric equals. A superior is a superior. Nobody has a problem with this. But a superior who is asking blind obedience is not a civilian superior. And a student who is following blindly what the superior is saying is not a good civilian. Amen. Dear Father Julian, in four days' time you are traveling from Colombo to Moshi in Tanzania to be a teacher to be a father, to be a friend to our young Salesians in formation. I really admire your presence, your teaching, your writing and your research quality. Above all, the way you shared your life with us in Sri Lanka and all over the world in the past and in the years to come. I wholeheartedly congratulate you, especially for the new project of 18 the International Seminar Workshop among all the Salesian Post-Novitiate Centers How to Teach Philosophy in a Salesian Manner in this time of our history and all the best, good health, please be assured of our humble prayers. God bless you and I'm with that she. Thank you for uh, making me feel at home.